Hello guys, my name is Ismail. So today we're going to be looking at how to make these curtains here. Uh, let me get them. Uh, these curtains here in Blender. Uh, yeah, so I've always struggled uh, with uh, making curtains like these make and uh, have them look realistic. Uh, so I've, I've, I've been experimenting with uh, the cloth uh, modifier or the cloth simu simulator uh, to see how I can achieve something uh, that looks a bit realistic. Uh, because uh, you, can, you can try modeling this, but uh, it takes a lot of time and it doesn't always come up uh, realistic. So yeah, let's look at how we can achieve something uh, that looks good and uh, quite easily using the close simulator. Uh, but uh, before I go to the tutorial, I want to thank everyone that has subscribed to my second channel. Uh, we, ha we are just in two days, in a period of two days, we are at already 37 subscribers. Uh, so as I said, I'm just separating this these two channels, top channel one on one, uh, so that this is only uh, this only has content uh, that I have voiceover on uh, that I explain. Uh, basically, it's going to be a step by step uh, tutorial uh, channel where I explain everything, and this is going to be a more like a time lapse uh, tutorial, and that you can see already some of the content I've already uploaded there. Uh, I made a key. Uh, did texturing there. I think I'll explain how I did the texturing because I think it's very interesting there. Let me just give you a s let me just show you the texturing part in case you are interested in that. I'll be making a tutorial, a step by step tutorial on how I did the texturing. Uh, but uh, for the steps how I modeled this, you will just have to look at the, uh, the time lapse here. Let me go to the textures. And see how uh, the textures came out. Yeah, so I, I'll be making an explainer video on how I made the textures to make it rusty. Uh, let me see if I can find the final image. Let me find. Uh, so, by the way, you can also, if you want to look at uh, the final images that I make, you can always go to the community tab here, and uh, I, I always upload uh, the renders. Uh, the renders there. I don't think I uploaded that. Let me upload it right now because I'm sure I did make uh, the render for that. Let me find it. Yeah, so this this is how the image looks. Uh, the keys looks. You can see the texturing that I did there. Uh, it, I think it looks good. So if you want to look at that, I'll just post it here. So you can always go to the community tab to see uh, the different. Okay, aspect ratio is wrong. I think this is the same thing I posted. Okay, you can always come to the community tab to see uh, some of the renders I've made, and uh, yeah. So let's go back to the tutorial and uh, see how to make these curtains. So the first thing you can do, let, I need, uh, let me just have this in the image editor, I'll also switch on uh, the screen keys and um, let me expand this. You can now delete this. So what we want to, to do is make these curtains here. So you can start with a plane, rotate it to face you 90 degrees, I'll scale it up, maybe turn on uh, random colors and then cavity and then shadows as well. So I'll scale it horizontally because uh, the uh, these curtains are always uh, uh, this aspect ratio or uh, or more more rectangular than square. So let's do that and uh, uh, then apply rotation and scale to 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 have all uh, the values uh, the scale values set to one. And uh, we can add in subdivisions uh, because we're going to be using the cloth modifier. But uh, don't add too many. Let's add around around uh, how many are these? Four subdivisions like this. Okay, these are five subdivisions. And uh, what you want to do? We're going to we want to uh, animate uh, these folding in. So we want these f f uh, vertices, all the vertices, uh, this side. Uh, to to snap. Let me first cast it selected. I want everything this side uh, to fold in this side. So the curtain will close 
like that and then open like this so we want to be able we want to animate this this here uh, but uh, I don't want to use uh, key shapes because that will take away a lot of control that we need uh, so what we're going to do is uh, use hooks so there is a feature if you have never used it uh, that uh, lets you uh, move vertices outside edit mode so you can see when you go to object mode you can't see you don't have access to vertices but uh, there's a feature that lets you have access to those uh, vertices uh, and uh, the way you do it is that uh, you par you can parent any of the vertices the vertices you have here the vertex uh, that you have here uh, parent it to an object uh, and uh, if you ho if you select an uh, vertex like this and 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 hold on control H you get this option to add a hook or hook that vertex to an empty so now we, when we go to object mode uh, we can select this vertex and you can see when I move that we can select that hook and when I move that hook because the vertex of this mesh is parented to this uh, we can move that vertex as well so we can select another vertex here hook it to another uh, empty you can see we can do the same so we're going to do this for all these vertices uh, that we have at the top uh, that way we can animate them and uh, the bottom vertices are going to be left free uh, so that uh, the close modifier animates them for us uh, so let's as first animate, uh, I need to add another but uh, hook here for this control H. So I want to animate these folding in here. So maybe let's add a cloth modifier so that we see what happens when we animate this already right now. So let's add, go to the physics tab, make sure that audio is good. Uh, so go to the physics tab and then click on cloth and uh, play back you can see that the cloth is just falling down uh, because though we have parented these hooks uh, the cloth uh, modifier is not considering anything we, we, we parented the object to uh, so we need to have this uh, also calculated in a cloth modifier by using uh, the pinning tool if you have if you watched my uh, flag making a flag uh, tutorial I can you you should probably know how uh, pinning works uh, so it's just a way of uh, letting blender know uh, what what says you don't want to uh, to uh, the cloth modifier to simulate or to add into its calculation so they will just be in the same position while uh, animate while the cloth modifier animates every uh, everything else so we can go but before we do that I want this I want to first animate these so that they fold in uh, like how like what we had like what I showed you earlier so let's turn on keyframe uh, the keyframe recorder here and uh, you can select a hook like this and uh, animate it say from there from there and uh, around here let's let me first turn off the close modifier maybe to around uh, on the 70 frame move it closer to this so that when we start animating you can see they will all fold in like that uh, so you can go on and animate one one by one but uh, you can see that can be time consuming and uh, you may not get the results uh, you'll have a lot of issues uh, with uh, uh, keeping the distance uh, consistent uh, so I found the easiest way to do this is select this last uh, hook then shift s uh, then add cursor to selected so that the cursor is that is at that point and then select all the all the all the hooks and then uh, then hit uh, full stop on your keyboard then is it yeah full to full stop on your keyboard to bring up uh, the origin uh, the scale the pivot point I set it to set it it's usually at a mid median point set it to 3d cursor or you can just go up here and select the pivot point uh, to 3D cursor so that when you're scaling or everything scales in towards uh, the 3D cursor and uh, you don't want to scale in all direction you just want to scale in the X direction or w wherever your orientation is uh, so that they just collapse into the last uh, vertex or hook so let's start animating let's add a first kick the first keyframe here and uh, maybe we can add a few frames uh, maybe 20 frames just to give uh, some room for the simulation to begin without us uh, coll collapsing these vertices before uh, collapsing the vertices yet and then let's move to around 100 frames and then it can scale in now 
not too f too much just around there and uh yeah so maybe we can stop the simulation to around our animation at around 150 now let's play back see that's what we want so now if we add the cloth modifier to this and see the cloth is just falling down and uh, we don't want that so what we want is to do is a uh, uh, pin uh, these hooks here. So I will select all the hooks then go to uh, this uh, Object data go to vertex groups Click plus to add the vertex group and then assign all the vertex vertices uh, that you have selected uh, Then that will assign the vertices in that group and now we can go to uh, the cloth modifier and under shape We should have this pin group uh, this just lets know let's blend and know what what says group of what says that it will not consider in the simulation that will just stay uh, still in the simulation so that means that uh, when they when the cloth is falling those what says will, will stay uh, in position and support uh, the entire cloth so let's add that and now when we play back okay, blend okay yeah so you can see uh, the cloth is being simulated uh, but uh, because we don't have a lot of uh, polygons you can even see that uh, it's swinging uh, we don't see a lot of movement in the cloth uh, so we can you can see all these uh, modifiers are being added by uh, added when we add uh, these hooks here and uh, the influence what hook works and what does not so if we a uh, turn off all the hooks and the uh, playback you can see we, we get a mess here but uh, let me see let me see. oh yeah because uh, because uh, the vertex uh, the vertices are still pinned uh, that's why the, the cloth is not just falling off so if we select these and uh, just remain with one vertex uh, select all these vertices but one and then remove so that only one vertex remained remains in our pinned group so if we play back you can see that uh, the cloth will fall off like that and uh, if we turn this back on you can see though the cloth is not pinned uh, these uh, should be following uh, that but uh, let's turn back turn on those vertex group again so I'll select them and then assign them again so that we have that now we just need more resolution for this cloth and uh, I'm not just going I'm not going to go in and subdivide so I'll, I, I want to use the multi resolution uh, modifier to add more resolution but uh, because we only ha we have a lot of uh, vertical uh, subdivisions but not horizontal uh, subdivision I would add in a few subdivisions there so that we have even subdivisions like this and uh, now if I play back can see the you can see the effect of the cloth modifier but uh, we, we is is still lacking more resolution so let's add a sub a multi resolution modifier so multi resolution i make sure it's above the cloth modifier mm -hmm. modifier otherwise it will not be included in the cloth simulation so let's go to sub instead of using calmal it's my cut mal i just go to simple and then subdivide a few times so that we have more resolution in this uh, cloth and then we can play back uh, give me a moment